Okay. Okay. And. Okay. 30 seconds. 30 more seconds. Fine. We're, we're running a tight ship here, you know? Okay. Okay. Breathe, breathe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Long time no see. And we can move on to Michele. So, the next big book of Tuvim. The Gemara says there are three large books of Tehillim. We just have uh, Ketuvim. We just did number one, Tehillim. Now we're on number two, which is Mishle, which is Proverbs. So, ooh, Proverbs. What is this book? What is this book? In contrast to Tehillim, where everyone, I think almost everyone has at some point at least mumbled some chapter of Tehillim between them and Kamarev at some point in their life. <laughs> Mishle, well, I don't know. I don't know if you've read Mishle. Except for Eishas Chayim. Okay? That's what you know. You know the 31st chapter. Great, you've finished Mishle, but now let's start it. Thank you. Okay, so, Mishle, Proverbs, what is this book? Polemical poetry. So, who wrote Mishle? So the Gemara says, Mishle is written by Shlomo. Shlomo, the wisest of all men, writes three books. Shira Shirim, Mishle, and Kohelet. When does he write these books? Well, the Gemara has different possibilities. Midrash has different possibilities. Some versions of the Midrash say he wrote all three at the end of his life, in one day, or same time, same sitting. Other versions of Midrash say, no, he wrote, first he wrote um, Shira Shirim, then Mishle, then Kohelet, because when people are young, they're in love, they write love songs, when they're in their 40s, they're contemplative, and they think, so they write Proverbs, and when they're old, they're grumpy, so they write Kohelet. I kid you not, this is the, I kid you not, this is the Midrash. Um, the Ural Bag suggests that he wrote Mishle, sorry, Kohelet, Mishle, Shir Hashirim, because Kohelet describes people's journey towards the recognition that wisdom is important. Mishle talks about wisdom, and Shir Hashirim is wisdom. Um, there are all types of versions, but Shlomo wrote Mishle. It is not just what he wrote, but Shlomo, who is the wisest of all men, Mishle is the wisest of all books. Why do I say that? So if you look at number one, the Gemara in Brachot says as follows. The Gemara is talking about symbolic dreams. So the Gemara says, there are three kings, I'll look at it in English, there are three kings whose appearance in a dream is significant. One who sees David in a dream should expect piety. One who sees Solomon should expect wisdom. And one who sees Ahab, Ahav, should be concerned about calamity. There are three books of writings whose appearance in a dream has particular significance. One who sees the book of Psalms should anticipate piety. As we've just talked about, it is the paradigmatic book of, ex of our expression of our relationship with God. One who sees the book of Proverbs should anticipate wisdom. So, if you see Solomon in a dream, you see Shlomo, expect wisdom. And if you see Mishle, expect wisdom. At some level, Mishle is Shlomo. Now, the Gemara says the same thing is true about Kohelet, that there are three minor books of, Kohel of Ketuvim which are significant, Shira Shirim, piety, and Kohelet, again wisdom, because at a certain level, Kohelet and Mishle are two sides of the same coin, and I'll come back to why that's true in a moment. Many people find Mishle a very hard book to read. I was listening to a shir on Friday on Mishle by Rabbi Chaim Angel. And he mentioned Mori Virabi, Ramosha Lechemstein. Sometimes Ramosha, Ramosha has a tendency with this, will say something that sounds counterintuitive, 
and I'll think about it for 30 seconds, and then I'll realize not only is he right, everything I've thought until now is obviously incorrect about this. So, so his comment on Mishlei is like that. If you think Mishlei is hard, you are objectively wrong. Why do I say that? Because Mishlei is for children. And now you're all going to tell me, you're offending Mishlei. How can you say that the book written by the smartest man ever, which epitomized wisdom, is for children? I can say that because he said that. Uh, because the, if you go through Mishlei over and over, what is Mishlei about? A father speaking to his child. Shma bini musar avicha ve'al titosh terat imecha. Listen, my child, to the lessons of your father and do not abandon the teachings of your mother, meaning you are talking to a child. There may be deeper meanings, but when you read Mishlei, if you think it's too simple to mean what it says, stop. Mishlei is, at, is simultaneously the epitome of wisdom and the epitome of simplicity. It is what a wise man, it is not what a wise man learns for himself. It is what someone who is the wisest of all men communicates to those he's trying to guide to his position. And therefore, it is meant to be somewhat simple. There may be multiple levels to it. But don't be surprised and don't be scared of Mishle. It's not a scary book. It is a book about wisdom. It is a book meant for everybody, even children, to teach them about wisdom, or more specifically, the importance of wisdom. Now, secular scholars will call Mishle wisdom literature, because there was a genre in the ancient world called wisdom literature, where people would write adages and proverbs and different insights that they had into life. And Mishle is very similar to many of the others, especially the work of Ben Sira, as Chazal already notes. Um, it is also strikingly, and this is, um, this is actually quite fascinating, it is strikingly similar to m much of the Egypt Egyptian wisdom literature, um, which is not surprising considering Shlomo was very close to the Egyptians. His first and, pro and most prominent wife was Fat Para, was the daughter of the Pharaoh. It's not surprising that he would write a book that would be influenced, that would be similar in many ways to wisdom literature. However, it is very different from wisdom literature in a way that will show now. Mishle is wisdom, but it is human wisdom. It is not divine wisdom exclusively. To prove that, just look at the difference between how Mishle opens and how Yeshayahu opens. Mishle begins as follows. Mishle Shlomo ben David Melech Yisrael. These are, so again, Mishle collects many different proverbs, adages from Shlomo and other authors, which may or may not be the same person as Shlomo. The Mepharshim divide on this. But Mishle Shlomo ben David Melech Yisrael. These are the proverbs of Solomon, the king of David. To understand, for learning wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of discernment. Lakachat Musar. How scaled said the Kumishpadu Mesharim for acquiring the, acquiring the discipline for success, righteousness, justice, and equity. For endowing the simple with shrewdness, the young with knowledge and foresight. He tells you this book is meant for the simple and for the ch and for children. Again, don't be scared. That's who it's meant for. It's meant starting there. Adults can also learn from it, but it's meant to be simple. It's meant to teach us wisdom. The wise men hearing them will gain more wisdom. Right? Don't stop learning it. It starts with children. As you get older, you'll get more out of it. The wiser you are, the more you'll get. The discerning man will learn to be adroit. To understand. Parables and proverbs and epigrams, the words of the wise and their riddles. So it talks about wisdom. He tells you it's going to be wisdom for all. But where does the wisdom come from? Where does it originate from? Well, not, not God, right? Man. Man. Chacham. From Chachamim. From Chachamim. Mishle is human wisdom. We're going to get back to God in a minute. We're not going to ignore God. Don't worry. Contrast that. Skip for a moment to three. Yeshayahu, 
חזון ישעיהו בן אמוץ, אשר חזל יהודה וירושלים ימי עזריהו יותם אחזי חזקיהו מלכי יהודה, the prophecies of Isaiah, etc. שמעו שמיים ואז הנה ארץ, כי אדוני דיבר, בנים גידלתי ורוממתי והם פשעו בי. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, and they have rebelled against me. Yada shor koneo v'chamor amos ba'alav. Yisrael lo yada mi lo itbonan. An ox knows its owners, and as its master's crib, Israel does not know. My people take no thought. Shayel starts in ways that we could look at other places in, in Mishle, it would sound the same. Right, Adam learned from Lechel Nimala, go learn from the ant. You can learn lessons from the ant. He says, go learn lessons from the ox. Um, if you look in the Psikta, um, they note that both Shlomo and Yishayahu criticize throughout their books, Leit Sanut, criticize scorning. There are themes that are similar to Yishayahu and Mishle. But what's the header to Yishayahu? That these are prophecies. These are visions from God. Mishle starts off that these are the Chachamim. These are the words of the wise, meaning they originate from mankind. So, when, so, when scholars note that Mishle is wisdom literature, what they mean is it's similar to other wisdom literature, that it provides these parables for life, these adages and proverbs and insights into basic life, and Similar to other wisdom literature, it doesn't claim that it is prophecy. It doesn't claim that it's from God. It admits right from the beginning that this is a record of what wise people have said <coughs> that you can learn from. However, however, its similarity only underscores the difference, which is, while it is wisdom literature in that sense, return to Mishle. Shlomo adds to this that while wisdom may originate, this wisdom may originate in man, it's not prophetic. Pasuk Zayin of Mishlei tells you that Yirat Adonai Reshit Dat, Chochmah Musar Vilim Bazu. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and discipline. Part of Shlomo's vision is that even if this is human wisdom, one of the fundamental insights that humans that Shlomo, the wise Shlomo, can give to his child, or give to the young, or give to adults who are later in their educational process is, it's not enough to be smart, you've got to be good. It's not enough to be good, you have to recognize that God is part of the picture. So I may give you similar advice, similar human advice to others, but don't forget that the in order for all of that to be meaningful, you need Yirat Hashem. And the fact that Shlomo can give the same advice as other <coughs> smart people in the ancient world, but can tell you in the seventh Pasuk that the basis of it all is Yirat Hashem, that tells you that he says it's true. You don't always need prophecy to get good advice. But don't get all infatuated with the fact that human beings are so, so smart and think that you don't need God in the picture in order for wisdom to be meaningful and complete, you need fear of God as well. So therefore, Mishle is the epitome of wisdom, but it is meant to be understood even by the most simple. It can be understood at different levels, as Shlomo himself notes, but it's meant to be understood even by the most simple. Like other wisdom literature, it originates with human beings and not in prophecy. But unlike other wisdom literature, it insists that for wisdom to be complete and meaningful, God needs to be in the picture. And that is the basic advice that Shlomo starts Mishle with. And then he continues, he said, Shma benim, as I said, Shma benim musara vichavalti tos terari mecha. Listen, my son, to the discipline of the rebuke of your father. Do not forsake the instruction of your mother. Mishle, as I said, is at a certain level very simple. When people are older, how do you convince them to do the right thing? You say it's the right thing to do. 
How do you convince little kids? Right, my, my four-year-old came for one of the shirin. He loves Tana. But what did I give him on the way in and way out? I gave him chocolate. Okay? Because little kids, you can't expect little kids to be ready to just do the right thing because it's the right thing. You've got to incentivize them. So what does he say? Because there are wreaths upon your head and necklace upon your throat. Meaning, it's good for you. It's fancy. It'll make you look good. My child, if sinners entice you, don't yield. If they tell you, come, come, come with us. Let us set an ambush to shed blood. Let us lie in wait for the innocent without cause. Just like Shaol, let us swallow him alive, whole like those who go down into the pit. They're going to entice you. What are they going to say? That we'll obtain every precious treasure. We'll fill our homes with loot. They'll tell you, come. Come, be dishonest with us. We'll share in the profits. So if you're older, you might tell somebody, it's not worth it. You'll get rich, but how are you going to feel? It's not what you tell a little kid. How do you tell your kid, don't cheat on the test? Tell him, you're going to get caught, and you're going to get a zero. Right? Don't cheat on the test. You think it's going to be good, because you, by yourself, can only get an 80. Now you're going to get a 95. No, you're going to get a zero. You're going to get caught. You're not going to get out of it. That's what he says in Tedvav. My child, my son, don't go with them. Hold yourself back from their paths. Because they're running to do bad. They're just speeding away to spill blood. They're going to set an ambush. But you know who they're an ambush for? Themselves, because they're going to get caught. They think they're tricking the teacher. They're not. The teacher is smarter than them. You think you've outsmarted it. The teacher's letting you take your test on the computer and they won't know you're using Google. It's not true. right? Every website you search, there's someone seeing it. There's someone because you're logged in. They know who's doing it. right? This is what they tell the kids here. Right? <laughs> They're allowed to use their computers, but they can see every website you go on. You have to sign in through your B'nai Kiva school's email. They can see what you're doing. They'll catch you, and you'll get a zero. And in Pazik Yudet, That's just the way it is. Such is the fate of old pursue unjust gains. It takes the life of its possessor. Mishle tells the kid, it's not worth it. He does it? Nothing highfalutin. Right? Nothing. Don't do the right thing because it's the right thing. No! Nah. Do the right thing because if you don't, you'll get caught. It'll be bad. Good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Always. Always. That's always how it happens. Is that true? No. Come back for Kohelet. But when Chazal tell you... But when Chazal tell you that Mishle is written by someone middle-aged, and you look at it, and it's writing from a middle-aged person to his child, and go, hell, it's written by an old person. What are they telling you? We all tell our children this. Do the right thing, because it's good. Bad thing, do, do bad things. Bad things happen to bad people. We've seen life. We know it's not fully true, but we tell it to them anyways. Because you know what? Deep down, that's how we feel things should be. And you know what? Not only do we feel things should be, sometimes we sort of feel that's the way it is. We sort of do. We never, we never escape that. We don't. Right? When you see someone who's a really good person and they win the lottery, and there was something that this happened to in my parents' community, you just say, you know what? They really deserved it. I'm glad good things happen to good people. Later on, we say, I wish it was always that way. But part of us always believes that. And Mishle, that's what Mishle is. And Mishle is the beginning of wisdom. We teach the child good things happen to good people. It's simple. It gets complicated later. But some, we have to keep inside our, ourselves a little bit of child, childless, child, what, child, Life. child, 
I don't know. We have to have our inner child at all times. How about that? Okay? We always need our inner child a little bit. Right? That's what Mishlei is telling you. It gets more complicated. But at some level, the wisest thing you can say to someone is, let me boil down life to simple statements that at some level are true. It's more complicated than that. But at some point, the wisest thing you can say is, don't drink and drive. Is it always true that you'll get into an accident if you drive while you're drunk and you won't get into an accident if you're sober? No. But we say don't drink and drive because people remember it. And we think that for the most part, that's good advice. So that's what Mishlei does. For the most part, good things happen to good people. Just get that. And wisdom, you don't need God to tell you what's... God is part of the story, but you don't need God to tell you certain basic advice. And that's what Mishlei is. Now, Mishlei outline, outlines many different types of wisdom. So let me just give you three. One, we've already seen, is general comments about wisdom and religious wisdom, but also... Family wisdom, family advice, things your grandmother might say to you. So, look at four. Tov aruchat yarak Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fattened ox where there is hate. Right? It's better to have a good meal, a simple meal with nobody fighting, than to have the big fancy holiday meal where everybody is yelling at, yelling at each other, right? I'd rather a regular Tuesday night dinner, right? You can just see your grandmother saying it to it. Mishlei includes simple advice like that. It includes political wisdom, such as five. For want of strategy, an army fails, but victory comes with much planning. Right? Plan in advance and things will go well. Have no strategy for international relations might not go so well, right? Might not so go so well, right? I'm not going to make any clue. <laughs> I'm going to hold myself back. Failing okay. to plan is planning to fail. Yeah, exactly, right? But that's what it is. It's an adage, right? Simple, no politics. Okay. <laughs> Dodd McRod notes why is it important? That even though Mishlei believes that wisdom can come from human beings, that it's grounded in... What, sorry. Why does Mishlei, which thinks that God is part of the picture, stress that wisdom comes from human intellect? Because Mishlei, being what it is, isn't just for Jews. It is for everybody. Take any Pasuk in Mishlei. There is nothing pretty much from the beginning to the end, that can only be read by a Jew. It can be read by, most of it can be read by believers and not believers, and they'll find meaning in it. And even the religious stuff is generic religious wisdom. This isn't Jewish. It has no historical description of Mitzrayim, any of that. Because basic advice, basic religiosity is common to all of humanity. It can be told to children, and it can be told to children of all religions and all faiths, and much of it can be told to people of no faith at all. Now, part of what Mishlei does, and this is where the polemical poetry comes in, is it doesn't just illustrate wisdom by telling it to you, it tells it to you by contrast. It says, this is what happens to good people, and this is what happens to bad people. But there's all types of bad people that it's talking about. Right, you think about it, when you're teaching your children, there isn't one bad person, right? There are mean people and there are lazy people. You want to criticize both of them. You want to teach your child to be a good person and to be conscientious. Well, Mishlei is the same way. And there are many different types of unintelligent people that Mishlei criticizes. So I gave you three. Petty, Let's, and the... Um, petty, Let's, and what did I give you? Ksil. So... Who are these three? So, number seven, the petty. Mi petty asurheina chasar lev amra lo. Let the simple enter here to those divided of sense, she says. Mishlei talks about the petty. The petty is someone, not a bad person, not someone who's unteachable, the person who hasn't learned yet. And therefore, how do you solve the problem of the unlearned? You teach them. So that's what he says. Let the simple enter here and I'll teach them. Or in... In number eight, Peti Amin Lechol Davar Varum Yavin Lashiro. A simpleton will believe anything. A clever person ponders his course. But if a simple person will believe anything, so what should you teach him? The right thing, because he'll believe that too. 
Right? They are simple. One person he polemicizes against is the petty. The solution to simpleness, simple-mindedness, is managing to get the right thing in his brain. He'll remember it. He may not be smart enough to figure it out himself, but that's okay. As long as he's the right teacher and right parent, all will be good. The second is the let's, the scorner. Who's the scorner? The person who hates wisdom. So to him, Mishlei has to say, avoid him because he has the opportunity for wisdom, but he, right, he tries to get rid of it. He doesn't want it. And don't be him. Right? Number nine. Yasur leitz li lekach to correct a scoff or a rebuke a wicked man for his blemish is to call abuse on oneself. There are certain people, you tell them off and they're just going to yell at you. It's not worth it. Don't bother with the scoffers. Tell wise things to wise people and they'll love you. So what is Mishlei saying? Simpletons, educate them, they'll be good. People who hate wisdom... Just ignore them. Don't be them. Don't derogate wisdom. Realize it's valuable. The third person is the Xil. Who's the Xil? So you look at 11. Um, like snow in summer, rain in harvest time, so honor is not fitting for a dullard. Now, who is this dullard, the Xil? Um, skip down. Sorry. Uh, go to Gimel. Showed lasus metek lachamor b'shevet legav xilim a whip for a horse and a bridle for a donkey and a rod for the for the back of dullards al tang silky valto pentishvelo gamata don't answer a dullard in accord with his folly as you'll become like him. The dullard is the person who can't really understand anything, right? It just it just he's impenetrable, right? So there's the petty, which is someone who is simple minded. You can educate the let is someone who hates wisdom. Ignore him. And then the Xil, we know these people, right? Sometimes, no matter what you do, you can't get through to them. Don't spend too much time with them, because you spend too much time with people who don't make much sense, it'll rub off on you, right? Mishlei is polemicizing at three people. He's like, value wisdom, and therefore, deal properly with all the people who are the antithesis of wisdom. People who can learn but haven't learned, teach them. People who hate wisdom, Avoid them. People who will, in Hebrew you say, who will confuse your mind, don't spend too much time with them. But Mishle, in the end of the day, is really, as I said, pretty simple. Right? It's coming, at some level, it's just telling you. Wisdom is the basic, greatest thing you can have. Combine that with a basic sense of morality and, and, and religiosity, and all will be good. At some level, we believe this. At some level, good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. We can hear that as a child. We can hear that as an adult. Avoid those people who will lead you away from wisdom, whether it's because they don't know it yet, in which case, educate them. If they hate wisdom, avoid them. If they're the type of person that will just confuse you, so, okay, don't spend too much time with them. Because the most important thing is just be smart. Do the right thing. That's, in a nutshell, what Mishlei is. He's ignore all that other stuff. Be good, be smart, and all will be good. And that's the basic lesson of Mishlei. I'll leave you with one last lesson, because I have one minute. Perhaps the most pa- famous pasuk in Mishlei is, It's Chaim Hilamach, Zikim Bavetom Chea Meushar. It is a tree of life. Torah, or wisdom, is a tree of life to those who hold on to it. So Professor Avi Horowitz in the Gra actually makes a similar comment. It says as follows. Don't make the following error. Don't think that wisdom isn't valuable because humanity fell in its quest for wisdom. Right? All of this praise of wisdom could be undone if you remember that the first sin of mankind in the Garden of Eden was that they went for the Etadat Tovara, that they wanted wisdom. Our quest for forbidden wisdom may have been what led us out of Gan Eden, but that doesn't stop wisdom from being the only way back. It may have been what led us out of Eden, but it's still a Tzchayim Hilamach Zikimba. That was the other tree that if we had eaten from in Gan Eden, we would have lived forever. So just because 
our overreach for wisdom was our first sin, our downfall, it's all we got. You want to get back to Gan Eden, you want to get back to simplicity, you want to get to the good life. Once we have wisdom, it's our only choice back. So take the simple wisdom of Mishle. Be smart, believe in God. Good things will happen to good people. Tell this to yourselves, tell it to your children, tell it to the child within you. Believe it, even when the picture gets complicated in Kohelet, because that will help you avoid all those who don't embrace wisdom, whether because they don't know it yet, in which case teach them, because they hate it, in which case avoid them, or because they can't process it, in which case just look the other way, but make sure that you've internalized the basic lessons that the Father wants to teach you in the book of Mishlei. And we move on to Eov, oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are sheets for Eov in the...